Well, I had to do it. I had to do it. I know I said in my makeup goals for 2022, I was like, I can't see myself buying any foundations or concealers for a while. Like I really just don't need any face products. And then Kiki was like, oh yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> lovelies. I am here today. I'm so pumped to be reviewing the Salt New York Sneaky Balm. Yes, this I was so pumped about, even though I sort of made this goal for myself. If you know me, you will know that I love Salt New York. And so when Kiki said that she was going to be launching a tinted balm product, I was like, yep, gotta get it. So I've had this for probably around a month now. I cannot remember when it was launched, but I literally, when it launched, it was like click, add to cart, getting it the day of launch. Uh, here right now, I have it in this little Makeup Geek palette, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I have the shade in the Sneaky Balm N10. And then, like I said, because sales, I had to get uh, one of the shades that I have really been eyeing in the lip and cheek. And this is Coco right here. So let me show you this shade. Oh, so pretty. It's like totally that like 90s, like rosy brown. And then I wanted to get something that was very unlike all of my other cream tint pros. So I went with rose. It's rose, right? Not rose. Yeah, it's rose. So we are going to be putting all of these on my face. I will be doing a pretty decent wear test. I was hoping to start this video a little sooner today, but you know how life happens. In fact, I've already filmed this video once. <laughs> I did a first impression once I got it in my hot little hands and Unfortunately, some things happened and that footage is all gone. Even though I already had the video all edited, but the plus is that now, instead of a first impression, I have a really solid review for all of you because I have been wearing this now for, like I said, about a month and we will go into all of the details of that. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist and here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. All right, so before we dive into the application, I just wanna give you some details on this balm. This sneaky balm is listed as a hydrating skin tint and it is $16. And so you can see the pan size right here. Uh, I will say that if you are really interested in this, I would recommend watching Kiki's video. I will have it linked down in the description box down below so you can see all the details. And plus when someone launches something I just like to get the deets from them and like know where their inspiration comes from and if you aren't familiar with Salt New York uh hello these are like some of my favorite cream products but that means that you're also not familiar with Kiki and she is the owner creator extraordinary color cocktailist behind Salt New York and she's freaking hilarious first of all but she's also an amazing makeup artist so I was super pumped when I saw that she was bringing this out because I just think that there's something about makeup artists who have been working on many different skin tones, many different skin types, that they're just in touch with what a consumer base needs. Now, as you can probably tell from the phrase sneaky balm, hydrating skin tint, this is going to be fairly emollient and hydrating, and it's going to be more of a tint than a like foundation. So this is really just meant to sort of give your skin a little evening out, a little glow, and really just make you feel like it's your best skin possible. And that is what I'm all about. So if that's what you're all about, you should stick around and see what it looks like. Let's get into that. All right, so as I'm starting to apply, I'm just going to give you guys a few details that I gleaned from Kiki's video and that also I've just sort of felt about this product. So the uh, Sneaky Balm right now comes in 12 shades, I believe. Now I did see that Kiki said that after getting some feedback, she is gonna do a couple more shades. I Honestly, I'm sorry that I don't remember which ones it's between. So this shade number 10 and I always get goofed up because the lightest shades are the highest numbers and the deeper shades are the lowest numbers. So for me, I just keep like going the opposite because that's what I'm used to. But let me tell you, aren't we here to revolutionize the world of skin tints, foundations, colors, all those things. And I really think that Kiki has that in mind. So uh, you can see here this shade on my hand. Now, obviously my hand is like a little bit lighter than my face, but I will say that I kind of wish that I had also gotten number 11, the one that's like a little bit lighter than this, just because for me right now, like this will be perfect for me come like a spring and summer. 
uh, but right now it's just like a half a shade too dark so I feel like I need to like brighten up areas with concealer which really isn't a problem and that's the beauty of having a like blendable tinted product because it is more sheer so you can kind of get away with a shade discrepancy now Kiki does say that these all lean like I would say neutral to slightly warm and really because <laughs> you know she talks about it in her video where it's like there's something in the world of makeup that <sighs> tones are made that really just aren't needed and even if you are a cooler toned person I think that there are shades even just looking at these swatches I'm gonna put these here that there are shades that will work for you and I personally <laughs> think just from what I have applied as a makeup artist, by the way, I'm gonna go through with the F15 on one side and then we're gonna go through with a damp sponge on the other. Uh, this is the Lerafe brush, by the way, which I'm super loving. And honestly, in my first impressions video, I used my BK101 brush, which I'll grab one right here. So this is the 101 and this is the Lerafe F15. So you can see similar shape, just this one's much smaller. And for me, with this product, this is a great way to be able to have this because it's more controlled. So just a little side note there, that is uh, that is why I'm going through with this brush. I really do love these Lerafe brushes. So uh, as I was saying, even just in like my work as a makeup artist, I have had so many times that people who are maybe slightly cooler toned with what is out there as a cool tone foundation they end up looking like peachy or pink. And it's like, that is, it is, it is not, <laughs> it is not needed. I don't think I know anybody that has purchased this that has a cool skin tone. So if you're watching this and you did, please let us know what you thought um, as far as like the tone goes. Uh, I'm also gonna say right now, I'm regretting putting this over my eyelid. I will take some Bioderma in a little bit to wipe that off because I definitely did find the times that I forget about that and I put this product on and then I put my concealer down or eye primer, I get a little bit of creasing, like more than I would normally and I think it's just from the emolliency of this product. So just going to pop a little bit of this on. So for me, this product is, I mean, I love the finish of this. Sorry, there are gonna be planes there's gonna be like clanging and banging. Jeremy, or <laughs> Jeremy is outside right now. Uh, he and his son are taking the siding off the house that was damaged in our fire. So there's just a racket and here I am just inside playing with makeup, but <laughs> we all have our duties in this household. All right, so uh, this is what I would say is a natural, healthy finish. Like it is not matte, it is maybe slightly glowier than satin, but not in a dewy way. Does that make sense? <laughs> like it doesn't to me feel juicier. It just looks like luminous and beautiful. All right, since I'm asking you what you think of it, I should probably like zoom you in so you can see a little bit better, but this is uh, just, you know, it's kind of evened everything out. My skin is doing really pretty good right now. I just have a little breakout right here uh, and a little bit of pigmentation, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. So it's a good it's a good time to have this product out. Honestly, even when my skin is horrible, I still wear like a light coverage foundation. This I would say is like, yeah, I'm, I was gonna say sheer to light, but I do think it's like dead on light. I don't think you're gonna build this up to medium. Uh, if you do, it's not gonna look right on the skin, I don't think. And it's probably gonna like slide off a little bit more. I think that this is a product that's really nice to like work into the skin and just have that like you but a little bit better look. So now we're gonna take a damp sponge and do the other side. So I just have a very slightly dampened sponge here. This is a Real Techniques one and we're gonna pop this on. So uh, I know that Kiki says that she prefers this method and honestly, like up until I bought this, well, back in the day, I used to love, love, love applying makeup with a sponge and I just kind of got out of it. I love applying concealer with a sponge just because I think it like really gives a beautiful like hydrated look to the under eye and it's just a way to like really press it into the skin. But uh, I just got out of it. Honestly, more out of laziness than anything, truly. And trying this out with a sponge is what kind of made me like go back to like, wow, sponges are awesome. <laughs> so this will give you, in my opinion, a bit more luminous finish and I mean, technically it should make it sheer out a little bit more because of the dampness, but I actually don't find that much of a difference. Um, I think it just ends up looking a little bit more hydrated. So that's, this is definitely my preferred method with this product. Yeah, see, I think 
like this looks like just like a shade too dark for me but we will be able to even that out when we add a little bit of a lighter concealer I just love the way that this looks on the skin so I think you can see here like to me this side just looks a bit more glowy and this side maybe it's just me but I feel like this side looks a bit more like satin so I am just going to use the sponge to tap into the other side to blend this out I'll be right back all right so here we are I'm feeling good I'm feeling glowy I'm gonna go through with the Oma stay woke concealer if you know me you know that I love this one and uh, I just want to get a little bit of brightness I think this is just gonna be like not like crazy like back in the day Kim K bright but it's just gonna be like a couple shades lighter than what I have on so I'm just gonna use this to almost like highlight because this is so light it won't I can't really use it to like conceal imperfections right now and that's fine I'm just gonna kind of go with what I've got going on I'm gonna actually use my sponge uh, I've just found that I've really like I said I've really been liking use as a sponge so I did go ahead and wipe off all the stuff that I put on my eyelids while I was yammering with all of you uh, so that I could just get something down that I feel like stays better with shadow perfect timing I can mute this I'll be right back All right, so here we have the final skin with a little bit of concealer added. Again, I just wanted to like brighten up this area a little bit, but I think that this looks so good. It just looks, again, like my skin, but better. It's like walking around with an Instagram filter on your face and not having like a crazy ton of makeup on. Like it's like natural you, but not. All right, now I'm gonna go through with the RCMA No Color Powder. This is just gonna be what I kind of like add into add a little bit of a longevity. I'm just going to pop this over my eyes right now, just like the tiniest bit of this. So what I usually do is I just like shake this like this and whatever is like up here is what I tap into. So it really doesn't take a lot. Uh, I maybe some days might use like a double shake. <laughs> I might do a double shake, but I'm going to leave this whole area because now we're going to go in with the lip and cheek cream tint pros and i am so excited to show you these shades they are still available well rose is one of the original shades but i did see that coco is still available and i know that it's limited edition so if you want to snag it you're going to need to do it soon no pressure but all right so i'm just going to take i think the other side of the sponge and we're going to go into coco and just kind of use this on the more like the backs of the cheeks now what I will say about this is if you use the Sneaky Balm and you also use a cream tint pro like the cheek color, I don't find that the color is like incredibly long wearing. And that's not necessarily all that surprising because, you know, uh, you're putting an emollient product over another emollient product and usually that just means that it's not going to last quite as long. So I'm just going to take the other side where we apply the sneaky balm and just like tap in this seam, if you will, in between the two. And yes, I am sort of like taking it up into my temples. Get a little bit more back here. And then I'm going to take rose and pop it on the front of the cheek. So, oh, this is just like such a beautiful, I don't, to me, like I could wear this and not wear a bronzer. I don't know, this color just like, it gives such a nice like depth of color and it almost makes me feel, so it's not a warm tone. By the way, I'd never swatched it on my hand. Let's do that. We're gonna swatch Coco, wow. I mean, it is like that cool rosy brown, but it still gives me that like slightly back from vacation, sort of like, this is it right here. So this is Coco and then this is Rose. So it's it's definitely a cooler tone. Like it's got a rosy brown to it. It's not like a peachy brown, but it still gives me that like, I feel like I just came back from Tahiti. I like it. It just looks like, hi, I was naturally in the sun and just got all this color on my cheeks and I love that look. So then we're just gonna take a bit of Rose and pop that more towards the center of the cheek. We're just gonna go for a nice little cherub moment, even though I don't really, right now, I don't really need any like more like plump cheeks. The uh, the ice cream 
The ice cream is doing that for me these days. <laughs> so I'm just again, kind of blending out that like front section a little bit. I would say that the lip and cheek colors are more emollient. They give you, they're not super glossy. These actually almost like dry down a bit or settle into the skin and they just have this beautiful natural, slightly dewy finish, but they definitely have more of that than the Sneaky Balm. And by the way, the Sneaky Balm is a completely different formula than the Lip and Cheek, than the uh, Radiant, and from the Sculpt in Bronze. So all three of those formulas are a little bit different and the Sneaky Balm is that as well. It's very different than those other three. So I'm going to pull out a shade of my Radiant so we can get a little glowy action. So I'm about to do an eye look showcasing some of the new new from Davina Cosmetics and I have an idea of where I'm gonna go with it, but I'm not quite sure. So anyway, I want to use a Radiant uh, Cream Tint Pro that I can use that will go with anything. So I think I'm going to stick with beige. Uh, I have beige and warm tan. I love them both, but I think beige is just gonna be for the moment right now. <clears throat> I mean, oh, it's like the angels came down and kissed you on your cheeks. I love these so, so much. Like this and Auric are probably, uh, the Glow Lust are like my favorite, my favorite juicy skin products. I'll put a little bit here. And then I'm just gonna dab a little bit. I haven't done my brows yet, but I'm just gonna dab a little bit above the brow. If I was doing like a really simple, like maybe like a eye crayon, you know, just like a shadow stick and like blurring it out, I could see putting some of this on the brow bone because it looks so freaking good, but I'm um, gonna be using powder shadows and I don't wanna do that. So this is, this to me is like a beautiful, almost like, hi, I just went skiing and I'm flushed from the winter weather. Ooh, kind of look, especially with my scarf now, uh, except that's not happening. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of that RCMA powder and just pop a little bit like at the front here. I want the color. I just don't necessarily want the glow right here. I find that if I am too glowy, it like accentuates some of the like puffiness that I can get right here. And then also I just tend to get like a little bit greasy right here. So uh, I have, by the way, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but I would say I have normal to dry skin, definitely leaning dry this time of year. As I'm filming this, it is February and it is hella dry outside. All right, so, so here we have our final skin. Obviously I would feel a little bit better if my brows were accentuated a little bit, but I mean this to me, again, it just looks like a, fresh in from the snow maybe like this time of year. I know I was just saying Tahiti, but maybe I got this color from like being out in the cold. Ooh, somebody hand me a hot cocoa or like a good spiced whiskey drink, whichever you prefer. I'm not picky, but uh, I really, I really do like this. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go film that other video and I will come back with a full face of makeup uh, hours later. So we should get a good five to six hour wear time out of this, which for a hydrating balm, I think is really good. In all honesty, that is about what I get out of this. I would say I get five to seven hours. That's like the wear time of this for me. And I really think that out of something like this, that's what you should expect. Uh, and I will come back and show you what it looks like. All right, lovelies, here for my check-in, my little wear test for you. So it has been uh, a little over six hours. And you can see here, uh, how this makeup is wearing. So I will say, I kind of forgot, I feel like I always do this, but I kind of forgot that I was going to have this wear test. And like during dinner, after dinner, Jeremy and I were chatting and I was like touching my face. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, <laughs> like, shoot, I forgot I was supposed to do a makeup check-in and not like just normal, like touching, you know what I mean? Cause if you touch your face throughout the day, that's part of a wear test. But this was like, just more like thinking, <laughs> think touching. You know what I'm talking about? But anyway, so I probably like might have worn off a little bit on the sides of my nose here. Uh, Cause I, I remember for sure I was like rubbing there. But anyway, so you can see that I personally feel like, I mean, it has definitely worn off. Like I feel like my little pigmentation spots here have come through again on my chin. This has kind of come through a little bit. Again, that's probably a place that I was touching, but altogether, while it's worn off some, it still looks really good. I have gotten a bit shiny. That doesn't really bother me. Like the forehead glisten, of course this cheek glisten just enhances the beauty of that Radiant Cream Tint Pro. Uh, this right here though is what I would probably touch up. Actually, why don't I just quickly take a little bit of this and I can kind of like touch these areas up. 
because like let's say you had worn this for the day and you're you know gonna go out for cocktails afterwards and you just want to like freshen up just a little bit I do feel like the blush has faded a bit uh, that is one thing that I've noticed with these if you layer cream tint pros over the sneaky balm you're not gonna get as much longevity just because they're all so emollient that I just feel like the wear time on it isn't as strong so if you're okay with that and you just want some beautiful looking flushed glisteny skin that's totally cool you're probably only gonna get like five or six hours out of that but if you use the sneaky balm with other products and I don't even mean like other powder products I mean like even other creams that you just find are more long wearing the cream tint pros in general I find aren't like the most long wearing product the blushes fade fairly fast throughout the day but they just look so gorgeous but anyway so I just did a little like touch up in my areas that I have some hyperpigmentation and then we can just take a little bit of the RCMA powder and I would feel totally confident just like refreshing my lipstick of course and then going out for a night on the town so by the way, if you do wanna see this eye look, this is in that Davina Cosmetics video that is up by the time this goes up. And if you wanna check it out, the deets are over there with a couple other looks. So you'll have to let me know what you think. So let's kinda of do like a roundup review here. The pros of this product are the fact that it looks stunningly gorgeous like skin. It looks so, so good. Like When I put this on, I just feel confident. I feel like I have confident skin, definitely. Another pro for me is the compact version like this is so convenient to have to take with me somewhere even if i wanted to pop it in this four pan right here which is probably what i would do is just throw this right in here i could put this in with a bronzer and be good to go that being said i'm going to jump into a con just for a second because they kind of go hand in hand in a compact like this where you have other shades you have to make sure that you're using a brush that is small enough that you're not going to carry over into the shades around it and the first time i used these that's what happened because i was using the bk 101 and uh, i was getting a little bit of the blush like i was trying it very very hard and it was just too much so when i found that i had this empty uh, makeup geek eyeshadow this is what holds their four pans this was like perfect. It isn't exactly like the perfect, perfect size, but I would have no problems taking this with me. I do think that this is probably also great because it's more airtight than what this is. So I think it will probably last even longer as well. But the travelability, not a word, but we're gonna go with it, is very nice. And you know, you could pop it in your purse, but really if I'm using it for a touch up, I would feel confident just like using it with my fingers, no problem. So that is another pro. The other pros are if you have dry skin, I think this is gonna look really good on you. If you do like that very light natural coverage, this is gonna be for you. Now the cons. So if you are oily, or even in that normal to oily, but you don't like a very dewy finish, this isn't gonna be for you. Even if you set it, I feel like it's just so emollient that your oils are gonna come out in a couple hours. Also, obviously, this is probably not for you if you like a medium to full coverage. You're never going to put, the, you're never gonna get this to full coverage. I feel like you could put this whole compact on your face and it still wouldn't be full coverage. It would just be really greasy and slidey. Now, let's talk about the cost. These pans are $16 and again, you just get the pan. Uh, I know some people were like freaking out by that because there is 0.15 ounces in here. So if you think of the typical foundation as coming in a one ounce bottle, that makes this seem like a very pricey product. However, Kiki was talking about how this is actually, while it is a hydrating, balmy, slightly more sheer tint, it has a lot of pigment in it. Like the pan actually, I believe the formula has 30 or 35% pigment in it. So you are going to be able to put a very thin layer of this on your skin and have that tint and still have it look like skin. That's why, because there is so much pigment in this that you don't really need a lot. So I personally have used this, you know, quite a few times and I feel like I'm gonna get some good use out of this. So I do think it's going to be a bit more pricey than your average foundation like probably it'll round out to be about like a high-end foundation you know if you think of that like in how much time you get out of a bottle of foundation but I really love it I think that you know sometimes it's not about how much you get of something it's how happy what you get makes you feel <laughs> does that make sense so I just think that this is a really good quality product that looks great if you were like me and you like just that sheer amount of coverage. So again, I obviously love this product. I'm very happy I got it. I really haven't gotten anything from Salt New York that I don't enjoy. I really love the brand. I love Kiki's aesthetic. I love her connection to makeup and 
like I said, the mixology of it all. Like she really loves every facet of having her makeup brand and I love that. So if you are someone who likes a light coverage, hydrating balm feel, if you are looking for something that's gonna give you a very skin-like effect and not be like too cakey on the skin, I think that you would really enjoy this. I hope that this review has been helpful for you. And again, if you are someone who has gotten this, please leave in the comments down below how you like it, especially if you are cool toned, let us know how you felt about the shade that you got. I know that Kiki was very open to, you know, helping people find their shade. All right, lovelies, it's getting late. I need to go to bed, but I did wanna let you know in case you missed it, uh, I know that I said that if I did buy a new foundation or concealer, I had to get rid of at least one or two. And if you watched my recent Get Ready With Me, I did do that. So I'm staying on par for my makeup goals. And obviously, this is a product that I'm so glad that I purchased. No regrets here. All right, I'll see you really soon.